guys everything fish bringing you another video because I got a surprise in the riffle tank so three two one boom we got plants in the riffle tank one out I also got sand in here too so let's start with that Monday found a whole bunch of bags of good pool filter sand behind my shed about 12 bags of good stuff so I figured hey I know it's not the best quality sand for plants or in general because it can get a lot of detritus and methane gas build up but all it is is stirring it up every week before a water change with a chopstick or something so I think it looks pretty good mixed it with some of the old gravel that's looser and I have this awesome new looking natural rock structure I put in the center tons of hiding spots for the darters but yeah, this pool filter sand put in way more than I needed. Average is like three inches deep in this tank. There's some spots where I swear it's like four, four and a half inches deep. And this is only a 16 inch tall tank, so eh, whatever. But anyway, Tuesday after that, went out to my local fish store and one of the many that I love. Got two plants. And because I'm so terrible with plants, I got two that are next to impossible to kill. First one is Water Sprite, awesome looking leafy plant, rooted that down in there, it looks pretty cool, I trimmed off one dead leaf but that's all I've had, and I don't know if these white leaves mean they're just coming in or if they're dying, if you guys know let me know in the comments because if they are dying I'll just snip them off otherwise, I like them to grow because like I said last try with plants and my 30 tall did not go well. But that's because I had coarse gravel as a substrate and I only gave some 6 hours of dim light. Or in here, sand substrate, 10 hours of bright light. I'm actually probably going to up that to 14 hours within the next week. And then here, this is actually Texas hornwort. And I know this is normally a floating plant by nature. In the wild you would never find it rooted like this. But I figured out that you can root it. You just have to take some of the leaves off the end of one of the stems and you just bury that stem in the substrate. And to me that looks awesome, way better than floating, but looks good either way. I just prefer it rooted on one side. So here we got the garden side of the tank, the rock pile, and filtration in a little rock pile. And there's my green side darters. They're actually way paler since I put the sand in, but with darters in case you guys didn't know like most fish their environments really can impact their colors and being in a white sand substrate compared to their old substrate which was same color as those rocks they're really kind of get some brighter colors but I'm hoping the green will come out in these because green side darters naturally live in environments like creeks with tons of lush algae mats meaning that's going to make their green come out and the fact that they're eating a little bit of that all day so I'm hoping that putting plants in here will bring out their green. So if you've ever seen a green side darter with maximum colors, they're just beautiful. They're like really bright neon lime green with yellow bands. It's awesome looking. And then my rainbow darters have just been hiding this whole time. The one will come out occasionally. The one is right in there under that rock. He never comes out anymore. So yeah, pretty awesome I think. Awesome plants. Hopefully I can grow them and I don't kill them. This is actually the first of my five main tanks. It actually looks how I envisioned it when I set it up. My other tanks, I all had a vision for what they looked like. And some of them look somewhat like it, but none of them look truly what I wanted them to and this is the first tank I've had that does so this is probably my favorite tank as far as aesthetics right now hopefully I can get all my other tanks looking better too but this is just an awesome looking I'm gonna call it my garden creek tank because just look at this guys for a second that is just beautiful for someone who's never had luck with plants even though I love them so I'm going to try as much as I can to learn as much as I can about aquatic plants before I go killing them again, which hopefully I won't. And I'm just rambling at this point, stall time, because I'm thinking of what else I need to cover. Um, some other news I have is 
as far as tanks. Some of you guys I've posted on videos and comments. You might have seen things saying about me setting up a quarry tank. And I want to say that is true. I've got a 15 gallon in my living room. Under some cushions that I will be setting up. Hopefully next week to breed Corydorus palliatus. Otherwise known as peppered quarry. But I prefer to call them polyatus quarries. Just because I like scientific names better. But yeah, I'm going to be breeding those. I got a guy who has them for sale, and I don't want to say his name because he breeds a lot of top quality quarries that a lot of people would kill to have. And I want to make sure I get quarries before he gives them to somebody else. But I will give you his name after I get the quarries. So yeah, probably going to get five or six more females or not more females I'm not, if I get five it'll be two males three females if I get six it'll be two wait I didn't even say that right if I get five it'll be two females three males if I get six it'll be two females four males because of course you always want more males than females hopefully once I start breeding them and get good at it I will hopefully be able to ship I don't know how far yet. That would probably depend. Once I do breed them, just let me breed, get them and breed them and have fry. And then you guys can PM me, PM me if you want any information about getting any. But back to this tank. Really happy with the way it looks. And I will see you guys next video.